One of the problems presented by the robust Australopithecines is how to deal with variation across geographic ranges. In the case of the robust Australopithecines, we have Australopithecus robustus from southern Africa, an Australopithecus boisei, or even the earlier Australopithecus aethiopicus specimens from East Africa. Is this geographic range, does that represent actually simply geographically displaced populations or two different species? This is the kind of problem and the question that we'll actually confront several times as we move forward in the class, as hominids begin to expand in range throughout the old world, is how do we deal with variation across time and space? Do we classify it as different species, or do we see evolutionary connections between them? Even if there is an evolutionary connection between them, if one represents a later lineage offshoot from the other, does this represent something that we would name a different species, or simply the same species at a later period in time? In the case of the robust lineages, Australopithecus robustus is probably coming earlier in time than Australopithecus boisei in East Africa. At least the earlier specimens from robustus probably precede the earlier specimens of boisei. So it's theoretically possible that boisei might extend out of Australopithecus robustus. If it does extend out of Australopithecus robustus, does it then separate and become its own species so that we have coexisting at the same time robustus and boisei? Or does it simply represent a geographic variant of Australopithecus robustus? This is the question that we can ask by making comparative samples across other kinds of geographically displaced lineages, other kinds of geographically dispersed species, and looking at the kinds of patterns of variation we imagine exist in these populations. However, the challenge again is trying to figure out what's the appropriate comparative model, and how are evolutionary forces acting to maintain either genetic continuity between these geographically displaced groups, or genetic isolation, the kind of isolation that might give rise to different species. In the case of Robustus and Boisei, there's aspects of the morphology that might help inform this discussion. There are differences in the, especially the facial morphology of Australopithecus Robustus that might distinguish it from Australopithecus Boisei, that might say that Robustus didn't really give rise to Boisei, that maybe their sister species coming from a similar common ancestor. Especially in later Boisei, as they extend, we can certainly see these robust features take on a proportion that they don't take on in Robustus. Although Robustus is, as its name suggests, robust, it's not as robust as the later Boisei specimens. So the Boisei specimens may be a more exaggerated form of the morphology and overall pattern that we see in these robust lineages in general. So that's one of the questions we have to ask, and one of the questions that can be addressed by future fossil discoveries is trying to figure out the exact temporal relationship, and they're using those fossil specimens then to test ideas about what kind of geographic variation do we see, and what kind of evolutionary processes are contributing either to isolation and therefore speciation, giving rise to Australopithecus boisei, or some kind of continuity between them. Current evidence supports the idea that boisei is probably a separate species than robustus, not simply a geographic variant. However, this again is connected to our understanding of the ecology of these species, something again we'll be talking about shortly.